talk about how to use the harmonic minor scale in this video and how to put it into our, our blues playing to really add some new sounds and some new flavors. And if you're like me, you didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to the harmonic minor at first. Maybe you were a latecomer like me. I thought it was this sort of like neoclassical scale and I wasn't really interested in that sound. <laughs> But once I started doing my homework, I found a whole bunch of things that we can really do with it and extract. You'll see me do it in a playing example in a little bit. But we want to talk about where it comes from and get a little background on it before we go forward. So way back in the day, classical composers were working in the key of A minor, right? And they wanted an A minor, maybe a D minor, and an E minor back to an A minor. But that E minor, a minor was not strong enough for them, didn't have enough tension. So they wanted to make it a seventh chord, maybe like an E7. So when you hear an A minor to a D minor to an E7, back to an A minor, it has this wonderful harmony as opposed to We're looking for that tension from the dominant seventh chord. So they changed the fifth degree of the scale to an E7. But their normal natural minor scale, which you may know, A natural minor works great over the A minor and the D minor. But not so well over the E7 because the E7 has this G sharp note in it. So we gotta figure out how to, um, you know, target that within a scale. So they created the, the harmonic minor scale. It sounds something like this. And the folks that I learned from said, don't even think of it as a minor scale. Think of it as a scale for dominant chords. And that's where the confusion can come in. So we've probably played minor blues songs before that go like A minor to D minor to E7 to A minor. So over that E7 chord, we can use that A harmonic minor scale. because it gives us that G, uh, G sharp note, which is the third of the E7 chord. Now what I did is I created a track that's just gonna go from A minor to E7, because I want you to have something to practice to that goes back and forth, and you don't have to sit through the D minor. But in some blues songs, you know, you will go A minor, D minor, E7. There's other songs that do this too, like Black Magic Woman will do that, maybe like in D. So there's your one minor, your five, seven. Right. How about Hotel California? So one minor, five, seven. Right? So this instance happens often in rock and blues, but we, you know, might be stuck too much to our minor majors and pentatonics to kind of see the light. All right, so let's hear me play a little bit. I'm gonna do a few things in this track. You'll see me play a few things, and then I'm gonna explain all of the things I picked from. I'll play the scale, I'll play an arpeggio, because you can play. So for A minor, and we go to E7, I can play an arpeggio over that. I can also do a really cool diminished arpeggio too. So I'm gonna do all that in the playing example, then we'll talk about it and play along a little bit with the track too. Before we jump into the track, I want to let you know I'll make that track available as well as some things that I'll tab out for you so that you're not totally lost when you're following along. 
Also too, at my website, you can get access to hundreds of lessons for just a low monthly cost, and that's on sale in the link below as well. And don't forget, you can enter to win a really cool GNL ASAC Classic that I'm giving away to celebrate hitting 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Speaking of subscribers, I'd love for you to do so and click the bell so you know when I put out new lessons. All right, let's hear me play this stuff. So we got some fun sounds there and it was a lot of fun to kind of groove on that track and really just go between the A minor and the E7. Now you're going to say, well, why didn't you do a full 12 bar blues? Because for this is a fun practice lesson that's really focusing on the harmonic minor scale and how we use it over the five dominant chord, in this case E7. So over all of the A minor stuff, I'm playing either A minor pentatonic or A natural minor. So that's all I did there. I wanted to really differentiate that because when we go to the E7, we're going to use notes directly from the A harmonic minor. So what I'm going to do is I'll tab out the scale and some of the other things, um, the arpeggios that, that I played, which we'll get to in a second. So over that A minor, I'm just kind of grooving over all A minor pentatonic bluesy type stuff. And then when we get to the E7, the first thing I did was, first of all, out of that A minor pentatonic, I make sure I really land on that G sharp note, which is our money note in this scale. Okay, so our scale. that works really well over that. So what I did was when I land on that G sharp, the first pass through, I just walked up the scale. And you may have seen me land on that B note. That's a really great note. That's the fifth of the E7 chord. And I could do anything I want with that. But I wanted to give you a full-on version of me running up the scale and hearing how those notes work. That kind of leads you down a path there. Then we go back to A minor, more bluesy stuff. Back to the E7 again. Now what I do here is I blatantly play an E7 arpeggio. And I do this because that is an arpeggio that lives inside of the key of, uh, or in this A harmonic minor scale. Every scale has groups of arpeggios that can be derived from it. And when you start the, the notes of the harmonic minor scale from the E and you build an arpeggio by going up in thirds, you get an E7 arpeggio. So that's perfectly legal and it's an E7 chord. So even if you didn't know a A harmonic minor scale, you can play that. But what I do is I walk down the arpeggio to some scale notes. We already established that B works really well against that E7. So I'm going. Back to A minor. Now we go to an E7 again, and we do another really cool thing. An arpeggio that lives inside of the scale is a G-sharp diminished 7, okay? And you can kind of think about this. Here's an E7. There's a three-note little seventh chord there. And we can play that arpeggio, that G-sharp diminished arpeggio, against that E7 chord, and it gives us the E7 flat 9 
and sound. So you pull a bunch of different things right from there. So the A minor to the E7. Back to A minor. Now we're going to use the E7 arpeggio. Back to A minor. Now the G sharp diminished. And all of that lives in the scale. And I'm kind of breezing through it because I'll tab it out for you. But this is sort of a nice way to get started hearing and hearing how you can apply it to some bluesier stuff. Again, we just went from the one to the five dominant chord. We didn't do a full 12 bar because this is a teaching moment. We really want to make sure you understand. If somebody would have showed me this years and years ago, I probably would have warmed up to the harmonic minor scale sooner. There's other nuggets in here too, okay? So um, this calls for maybe a, a short course someday on my website and um, you know explaining this stuff so we really really feel like we're empowered when we come across a minor blues you're gonna come across other things that you need to do this with like minor two five ones uh, is another good way to kind of incorporate the harmonic minor scale but let's roll the track a little bit and have some fun and I'll call out some things and really uh, we really want to get an understanding so let's do that all right, I got the track pulled up. We're gonna roll it, I'll play along and kind of just talk it through a little bit so we can really you know, get some ideas and start to figure out ways we can practice on our own. All right, here we go, let's try it. Start with A minor blues stuff first. Now we're gonna play the A harmonic minor over the A E7 chord. Seven arpeggio. Now we're going to do that that was the G sharp diminished seven. bit of E7 plus the scale. changing that's the important part so when I go here I can make choices right I can just play little passages all kinds of stuff that we're deriving from that. It's a part of a much larger picture because there's all sorts of arpeggios that live in the scale. Okay, Those are just two that we chose, the E7 and then the G sharp diminished seven as well. And there's other theories, you know, musically as to why that works, which we can get into at other points. All right, but when we're talking about A harmonic minor over an E7 chord, we need to know that we have options. And really think about harmonic minor is the main thing they're used for is over that 5-7 chord. Okay, that's really, really important. There's, there's um, other folks that will use them over the, you know, the A uh, minor major 7 chord. That would work well, but we don't play that chord that often. But we do play 1 minor to 5-7 a lot more often. So that's where you can get some mileage out of stuff like this that seems maybe out of reach for you. Okay? 
I think this was a fun dive into the harmonic minor scale, and I'm going to keep diving in too so that we can continue to learn together. So don't forget, you can go download um, the track. You can download some of the stuff. I'll put the, the, um, I'll put the arpeggios and the scale right there. Man, I, I wish somebody would have taught me how to learn little chunks like this. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. And of course, don't forget, you can still enter to win that great GNL Telecaster that we're giving away. It is an ASAC classic. It's not a Telecaster, that's a Fender. But it's a GNL. Uh, click the link below for that. You can enter to win that guitar. And uh, thanks so much for hanging out. It's been another fun lesson talking about some really great stuff for you guys. All right, subscribe, hit the button. You know the drill. I'll see you next time.